Hi, my name is David Davenport. I teach economics at McClendon Community College here in Waco, Texas. And I want to show you a trade project that I use in my classes, and I kind of hope that you can use it in your classes as well. So the trade project began on trips that we would take to Australia and New Zealand. I'd have the international uh, students. They would do the trade project when we got overseas. Well, when I came back to my face-to-face -face students, we'd talk about what the students did. We'd go to the grocery store websites. We'd look at the different types of foods, the currency issues. The students really enjoyed the conversation, so I decided to adapt it for the regular face-to-face -face classes. And a benefit that I had not expected was international students here tend to be a lot quieter, a lot more reserved. But after a couple of weeks of doing the project, they really started getting into it. They'll start talking about foods from their home. Uh, we'll talk about currencies. Uh, the students from Mexico, we could bring up HEB Mexico and look at what's going on there as well. So it helped with the international students. It livened up the conversation. Uh, it benefited the uh, rest of the students as well because most of our students have actually never even left the county. So this international flavor really benefits them. So how do I run the project? Uh, students have to turn in four assignments over six weeks. Uh, you're going to need to give up uh, probably one to one and a half days of lecture time to have a really good discussion about the projects. And the actual dollar cost is just the cost of printing out the assignments themselves. So what I'd like to do is go through the individual assignments, uh, how I work with them, and then at the end we'll talk about benefits to you and to the students. So in assignment one, uh, students are sent to their favorite stores and asked to fill out the price and size information in the table. So the first table you see shows what students will fill out, and the second shows my data that we will use throughout the demonstration. So the only strange part is the size of the toilet paper. Uh, some toilet paper rolls are single ply, some are double, some packs have 124 sheets per roll and others have 248. So it's just a fun way to get students to see their research isn't always a straight and easy path. So for assignment two, students are randomly assigned to a country with one third each going to New Zealand, Australia, or Canada. I chose these three countries because I've got a good familiarity with them and they are English speaking countries. So there isn't much of a language barrier. Students are trying to predict sizes and prices for their basket in their newfound home. So I need to introduce them to the metric system and to exchange rates as well. I give them a quick tutorial on the metric system, uh, a 10 minute lecture about exchange rates and how to find one. And then I send them off to do their work. I break it into two separate parts to try and make it a bit easier on the struggling students. Uh, some students are going to have problems with it at the beginning, especially those who haven't traveled before. Assignment three is where students really have fun. They're going to go to a pre-selected uh, store's website in their country and fill out the table from assignment one by inputting data from the uh, foreign countries. The data shown here is information I pulled down from the Countdown website in Auckland, New Zealand. I warn students this one may take a bit of time and they will have to think about how to get the data. Ground beef is known as beef mints in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, the New Zealand measuring system for eggs uses numbers and Cocoa Krispies are known as Cocoa Pops. So I don't tell them what to look for initially, but if they have trouble finding their products, I will give them hints. Getting the Big Mac and gas prices can be a bit tricky, so I send them to the Economist Magazine's Big Mac Index and a good gasoline website, which you can see in the paper there. The students are really enjoy exploring the website, and they get to see all the different types of products and the terms in the different countries. This is the part marketing majors really love this part. So assignment four is the capstone part of the project and is definitely the hardest. Students are asked to bring all three of their assignments. I divide the class into three groups by country, and then we work through the assignment. I give a quick lecture on purchasing power parity, the law of one price, and I show them an explanatory video on the Big Mac index. I work through my calculations on the board with the formulas as you see on this page. The country mates then work through their calculations together, helping each other out. When they're done, the countries designate a prime minister who puts their data on the board and makes the country presentation. As compensation, each leader is going to get something, uh, New Zealand candy, cookies, something like that. And they enjoy that. There are two final projects for assignment four, a correctly filled out table and then a two to three paragraph explanation of what happened with their data. Either purchasing power parity held or it didn't. 
Uh, they also need to give me several reasons why purchasing power parity doesn't usually hold. So uh, here are a couple of options I've come up with over time. Uh, the simplest way to deal with students taking you from more than one class is just have them do a different country. Uh, if they have a familiarity with a foreign country, they can try that as well. Mexico, England, these are really good options as HEB is in Mexico and there's actually a Walmart subsidiary in England. For advanced students, you could have them do all three countries to see if there are any arbitrage possibilities. Uh, for other options or how to use this on a study abroad, contact me and I'd be glad to send you the information I have on how I've used this and other methods in my classes. So what am I hoping students will get from the trade project? Well, from a classroom perspective, here's a list of some of the concepts I cover in class. So as you can see, there's a lot of different things that you can cover. You don't have to cover all of them, but the opportunities are massive. So I've already talked about many of these, but I would like to talk about one more. Uh, HEB, as I said, is a San Antonio-based grocer operating in Texas and in Mexico. So I asked students what size milk bottle they'd find in Mexico and why. Well, the answer is 3.78 liters. We can then discuss how companies can reduce average fixed costs by producing bottles on one line from a large plant and then using those bottles across borders. The students really start to understand the cost chapter a bit better. So general benefits to students are that they learn a bit about economic research and the scientific method, why they need to know the metric system, and most importantly, that there's a large world out there. If they understood and enjoyed the project, they should seriously look into international trade, especially if they speak a foreign language. From a personal perspective, I think students should travel to at least one foreign country, and this gives me a chance to talk a bit about New Zealand and Australia and hopefully whet their appetites. So one thing I'm pretty proud of at our school is we have a Student Scholar Day each fall and spring where students can present their own research. Students have the opportunity to earn extra credit on the project by presenting their findings as a poster session. They can earn a 20% boost on their grade just by creating the poster itself. So here's a couple of samples of our work from our students that would qualify them for the bonus points. Most of my students work, so I don't require students to be present at Scholar Day, but I do really try to sell it. They learn how to work with PowerPoint and Excel, how to embed graphs into a presentation, make posters, and how to carry themselves in front of a group of people. Plus, they get a free lunch out of it, and I give them some more New Zealand cookies or pavlova. So thank you for watching the presentation. I hope you can use this in your own classroom. If you'd like more information, please contact me at ddavenport at mcclendon.edu, and I'd be happy to send you the Word document version of our assignments. Have a great day.